before I get started, some of these things are so embarrassing saying out loud because now knowing that we were with Third Eye Blind and like looking back, it is so obvious sometimes, but you'll see like I had no idea. The name Third Eye Blind meant nothing to me and I have the text messages of Marissa and I the second that we found out who they were. And she was texting me being like, oh my God, it makes sense. Like they're third eye blind. And I'm over there being like, do you know who that is? What does that mean? <laughs> like it's so stupid looking back. Hey, it's Shay. The video that you are about to watch is an old video. Well, it's old footage that I kind of started going through. Decided to put together a video from when Marissa and I were on our vegan travel trip. And this is from Bali. Kind of was sparked by a TikTok that Marissa made. It was that trend that's going around. Talk about when you met a famous person and didn't realize that you were meeting a famous person. The story behind this is so much more than what we actually got on footage. To start this video off, I'll give you guys a backstory. This is what happened. So Marissa and I were a couple months into our trip and we had been in Bali for about a week to two weeks with our friend Ali. And Marissa and I had split off from Ali and had gone to Uluwatu because it's a lot more rural, kind of a jungly feeling. And we needed that in order to catch up on work. We had gotten this Airbnb that seemed to be nice. <laughs> um, it wasn't, fast forward, but we had walked in and there was a bunch of guys in the pool and we didn't realize that our pool had been a communal swimming pool we thought it was a private villa um, and we're like oh shoot like oh well so we like walk in and these guys are like hey <laughs> what's up welcome we're like wow this is a very welcoming public villa <laughs> these guys are like you are in the wrong place but come in please like come hang out with us grab a beer and we're like what and they're like this is definitely not your airbnb this is our airbnb you're in the wrong airbnb <laughs> but we went to try and find ours and they're like no just come back come hang out with us like yours is next door but as soon as you get settled in come back and we're like okay like sure whatever we leave we go set up in our airbnb and realize it is an absolute dump <laughs> It was not good, not as advertised at all. There were dead geckos all in the bathroom. To clean, they sprayed the entire bathroom with like a bleach water, so that included the toilet paper, it was soaked in bleach water. <laughs> and the doors didn't lock. We had all of our drones, laptops, all the tech equipment we had brought on our trip with us was in this unlocked villa. We'd gone to get some food at a restaurant next door. While we were at the restaurant, it started downpouring. Like if you've been in Bali in a rainstorm, you know, it is like flooding the streets within a minute. It's so heavy when it rains. At this point, we had realized we were getting nowhere with editing. I think we had no Wi-Fi in our villa too. It was just like the most pointless <laughs> work stop that we had done thus far. So we ran back in the rain. We were soaked. Let's just go say hi. We're like, hey, we're back. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. We ended up just kind of scratching our entire plan to work. Just hung out with these guys. The second day, I think they taught us how to surf. They let us keep our stuff kind of at their place if we needed to. We kind of used their place as our place. It was the sweetest group of guys. And there was a range of, you know, mid early 20s to like 50s. There's a very like random group of guys. They had scooters, we didn't, and it was impossible to get around the area we were in in Uluwatu without a scooter. So we kind of just tagged on with them. You'll see a bunch of footage of that pretty much just everywhere we went, we went with them. Oh 
Oh, go, mate. <laughs> So then, on like the third day, I think that was the day we went surfing, we came back to their villa and we were just hanging out. Then this earthquake hit, <laughs> the pool was shaking, so they started surfing on the pool with their surfboards, kind of just riding the waves. Um, towards the end of the night, this was on like the third or fourth day that we had been hanging out with these guys. They the whole time been telling us, let's, let's preface this, they the whole time had been telling us that they were um, this band. It was a reggaeton band. I didn't even know what reggaeton was. It was a reggaeton band um, and they, were, they had a show in Malaysia. So they were stopping along the way in Bali before their show in Malaysia. I did ask them to play some of their music and they're like, no, whatever, like, it's not that good. Like, well, if you guys have like a weird audience in Malaysia, like a little random, but okay, maybe that's like a reggaeton is like a thing there. I don't know. This is so stupid looking back on. <laughs> They've been asking us to go to Malaysia with them to like come watch their show. And we're like, mm, we're good. I'm sure your music's great. We got to get on to Thailand after this. Not going to happen, but congrats on the show. Hope you get, you know, some people showing up. <laughs> so I was mostly riding around with a guy named Luke. He was their tour manager at the time. And you'll see footage of him asking if I had figured out the band yet. You figured out the band yet? I had already figured out the band. It was for sure a dad band. I'm like, okay, but there's like these young guys, this one in particular, the older guy. So like, this is a dad band, 100%. Like this older guy, Steven, and he's just living out his dad dream of being in a band. That's what my first thought was. They were gonna go to the speech party the next day. We didn't wanna go because we had to catch up on work this time for real. And we swapped Instagrams and in their bio, it said keyboardist for third eye blind, bassist for third eye blind, whatever for third eye blind. And we're like, Oh, I, I'm over there, okay, turkin. I'm over there being like, oh, is that your, your secret band name? Your little reggaeton name? Cause Third Eye Blind meant nothing to me. <laughs> so, Marissa starts blowing up my phone. She's right next to me. Starts blowing up my phone, being like, holy, sh I'm gonna put up the, the text messages here. She's freaking out, being like, oh my god, like it makes sense. Cause they took us out to this really nice dinner for one of their birthdays. Like you can see the messages. But then I'm like, oh, do you know what that means? Like, does that mean something to you? I don't know who that is. And I start screenshotting. I start screenshotting their Spotify account, being like, oh my gosh, they have so many plays. Like, wow. And she goes, Shaden, you know who they are. You know who they are. If I played you, I don't know, Jumper or whatever, you would know that song. So then we go back to our villa that night. She's like, let me play this song for you. The second you hear it, you're going to poop your pants. <laughs> and poop my pants I did. <laughs> the first notes of Jumper, come on. I wish you would. I don't think, I, I, my jaw did not stay attached to my face. It was mortifying. Uh, Marissa and I had this running joke during the whole thing that um, paparazzi were following us everywhere we went, which was not the case. They were just tourists taking photos. And we're on the beach surfing, sitting on our surfboards, and these tourists came up and like wanted photos with us and of us. So we're like, sorry guys, like our fans are kind of aggressive sometimes. <laughs> Don't mind them. Like, they just need some photos, they'll leave us alone. That's <laughs> not a big deal. In the meantime, they were taking photos of Third Eye Blind. <laughs> it's safe to say we hid out for the next day. <laughs> uh, we're like, we gotta just play it cool. We gotta sit here, act like we didn't just figure out we've been idiots for the last four days. <laughs> we're all hanging out in the villa, and at this point we know. Marissa and I know. Um, they come back and they're like, come on, like, come to Malaysia. 
like we had our layover there already. So we just canceled our second leg to Thailand and flew, spent the night in Malaysia and the, did the show and then went the next morning to Thailand. We're going! Oh, 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 work it, work it. Two of us. hotel room we're jamming to some of their music and getting ready super super fast because it took us way too long to get here but yeah basically we're all rushing to get ready we're gonna get ready and go straight to the venue Woo! Woo! <laughs> oh by the way the other girls that are in this video we also met them in Bali and they also got invited so we're all here together <laughs> She lives and she goes and she lives for me Says she lives for me ovation Who own motivation She comes out and she goes down on me And I'll make you smile like a drug for you Do ever what you wanna do Coming over you Keep on smiling what we go through One stop to the rhythm that divides you And I speak to you like the chorus to the verse Drop another line like a girl with the curse Two with the best hair in the room, right there. Whoa, that was hard. Oh my god. <laughs> so Shay, Shay's decided to uh, braid the band's hair, so that's what's happening right now. It looks really good. I don't know how I I just. I wanna get out of this. I wonder, is there anything? Pot pie. Vegan yeah. <laughs> chicken pot pie. This is supposed to have like a mole in it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then I thought this was potato, but it's actually cauliflower and peas. Oh. It's delicious. Yeah. yeah. And then a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and uh, really satisfying. Bon appetit. This is the longest video, but that's the story of how we hung out with Third Eye Blind for three days without knowing who they were and then went with them to Malaysia 
for their tour. And then now too, it's really great because like I said, we had established this really good friendship with these guys without knowing who anybody was that at this point, like whenever they come to town for a show, we always get to hang out and catch up. And the band has changed a little bit since then, but it's still the same great group of guys. So that's my story. And I'm gonna start putting up more uh, old footage and I'll probably do the same kind of thing where I preface it. Let me know if this made sense to you guys or if you like this style of editing. Hope you enjoy. See you next time. Bye.